Our first presenter is a spider scientist and biology professor at Lewis and Clark College. Dr. Greta Binford has traveled across the world collecting spider specimens. Back at home in her Portland lab, she milks their venomous fangs to untangle the web of speciation, how species diversify over time. She's served as a consultant on the Spider-Man movie franchise and is even the subject of a children's book. Please welcome the spider woman herself, Greta Binford. time of year when you might walk right into a spider in its web when you step out the door. Now the reaction, the, the reactions uh, that, the range of reactions that people experience um, could be concern for destroying the web, um, distress about where the spider might be on your body, or fear that's su sufficient to take a baseball bat and actually kill the animal. No matter where you fall on the spectrum, I want to give you reasons to be inspired by the arachnids around us. There are 46,000 named species of spiders, and these are mostly uh, predators of arthropods. Collectively, they eat massive amounts of insect biomass. They're essential components of ecosystems, and they help manage herbivorous pests and insects that, uh, that vector human pathogens. Over 300 million years of evolution have led to remarkably diverse methods for capturing their prey, including spiders that stab prey from the air, scoop them up from the air, pounce on them like cats, and even spit glue to tether them to the ground. And the tools that they've invented to help them with this predatory lifestyle are truly inspiring. Um, spider silks are one of the most, uh, the strongest biomaterials known. Its tensile strength is greater than steel, yet it's lighter than carbon and tougher than Kevlar. We now have the, the technology to mass produce spider silk and there's progress in designing and testing materials that, that for uses in medicines, ballistics protections, and importantly for Portlanders, you'll soon be able to buy from North Face a spider silk parka. <laughs> Stylish and functional, while being lightweight and biodegradable. <laughs> then there are the venoms. An individual spider, like the one that might be in your hair after you walk through that web today, can have hundreds of thousands of distinct chemicals in, in its venom. And these are cocktails of proteins and peptides and other components many of which have exquisite specificity in the ways in which they manipulate the, th their physiological targets. They do things like cause cells to rupture, they dissolve the matrix between cells, they snip apart proteins, but the toxins that create the most excitement tend to be those that manipulate the nervous system. Among spiders, there are venom toxins that manipulate every part of neuro neuromuscular junctions. These chemicals hold remarkable promise for applications such as tools, tools for understanding how our bodies work in very nuanced ways, for drug discovery, and for discovering insecticides that specifically target um, in particular to pest species. For example, the venoms of this crab spider, which you can find in daylilies here around Portland, um, house calcium channel blockers, and these work on beetles and flies, but not on honeybees. Many spiders, including this Atrax, a uh, funnel-weaving spider from Australia, have venom toxins that manipulate sodium channels, and they have a lot of promise for being able to help control pain. You may be hearing, as I am on NPR, about a new peptide that's creating excitement and found in tarantulas that's got, uh, that's got potential for treating muscular dystrophy. These specifically target uh, mechanosensory ion channels. Right now, there are at least 35 patents for therapeutic applications of spider venom components, but the potential for more is truly mind-blowing. It's estimated that are, there are 10 million bioactive spider venom pep peptides, and we only know about 900 of them as being characterized. The work that I do at Lewis and Clark with my students and collaborators is focused on a toxin um, found in brown recluse venoms. As this is an enzyme that snips phospholipids on cell membranes. And it's, it serves a, to role, a, in an insecticidal role in, in, its, uh, in, uh, in spiders. The one thing that's really cool about them is we've discovered that the enzyme activity is very specific for different phospholipids. And so they may be useful tools for helping us understand the architecture of cell surfaces, which is important for understanding disease. Finally, 
Every individual spider is an important piece of the a puzzle of helping us understand the tree of life. They've been generated by these evolutionary processes, and as we can use them to help understand how species are related, we generate a roadmap that, help us, that helps us understand the evolutionary processes that have generated this biological diversity, both at the species level and the molecular level. So think twice before killing that spider. Rather, take a moment to realize with, uh, with wonder that we're surrounded by these small animals that contain with them, within them the possible solutions to many human problems. Um, and we seem, we, we're at risk of losing them before we can actually learn all they have to teach us. Wow, I'm surprised. <laughs>